the scarier you are, the higher the bill you are going to pay. This is not just a fact for a tech industry, this is a fact for all every single other industry. When people are scared, they love to pay more and a lot of people take advantage of this. Uh, this video is going to answer a lot of burning questions which are inside you regarding the, regarding the cloud. I 100% can understand that when you start the cloud journey, you are scared about the bills. You have read a lot of articles about the scariest stories of racking up the bill too high. And should I be worried about those bills or not? Now, I'll be discussing all of that in this video. First, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Yes, after you hit that subscribe. All right. So let me answer all of these questions. I've written all of your questions so that I can answer them one by one and we can actually have a proper scheme for the video. We don't deviate that much. I'll also walk you through that how these some of the other providers or the companies are able to provide you these cloud sandbox in which they worry about the bill. You don't worry about the bill. What are the pros and cons of this? So let's have a detailed discussion on this. I am pretty sure this video will be super helpful for you if you're getting started with the cloud. If you know somebody who's getting started with the cloud, go ahead and share this video. This will be super helpful for me, for him, and for you as well. <laughs> All right. So first, let me take you on to uh, my screen. And I've written a couple of questions for you. The first question be, uh, should I be worried about the cloud bills? Now, I would say up till a certain extent, you should be worried about the cloud bills. And this worriness will make you a better engineer. If you're never worried about the cloud bills, you will never handle the cloud with the responsibility that, hey, this bill could rack up and this will never teach you anything. Although for the learning perspective, you never ever have to worry about the cloud bills. All the scarier stories that you have read, at the bottom of these stories, it always says that the cloud providers were very generous, they waved off our bill, even in the startup, sometimes they waved off the bill if this was an accident. For the learners, they are aggressively super, uh, super kind because they understand the value of freshers who are learning cloud. So you never have to worry about that. Also, there is a lot of free tier usage that actually is available to you to learn the cloud. But I would say that cloud sometimes cost a little bit money. First of all, two, three rupees to verify your account, uh, maybe sometimes 10 rupees or something like that. And some of the services which are paid services by the cloud, there is no free tier available. If you're always worried about that, you will never learn or understand these uh, paid tier services. Now, bill is not crazy enough. Sometimes it costs 1000 rupees, 500 rupees. And if you are not able to afford that much, I think cloud is not meant for you. You will only learn the cloud when you will explore these paid services. And sometimes they cost 500, 1000 rupees, 2000 rupees here and there. Uh, but for this series, it will not cost you that much. But be prepared for at least that much of budget. If this seems like too much higher of a budget, maybe come back later on in the life and learn again. There is no harm in that. So this answers your very first question. Uh, moving on, what is this the sandbox offered by XYZ? So this is a common question. Uh, there are a lot of companies, a lot of educational companies, which provides you the cloud sandbox in which they simply say, I will worry about the bill and you just focus on your learning. Now, how this is being done? First, let's address that also. And there are some limitations. Of course, this is a sandbox. That means not all the services are exposed to you. And uh, yes, there is a bill that uh, the company actually bear on your behalf, but it's nothing. It's almost like free and uh, they just charge you because they have offered a service. So there's a fees for service and there is no wrong or right here. It's just your convention. You are scared. They are making money. It's all a good deal here. Now, how they actually do this? Let me also walk you through with that. So this sandbox environment is actually an offering by the AWS itself. You can simply go ahead and search for AWS sandbox. You'll find a lot of these services. I am not associated with any one of them, so feel free to try if you want to try them out. I have checked a lot of them and I constantly do check a lot of them. Now, if you look for it here onto this uh, GitHub repository, you'll find that the GitHub also is aware of this situation and they provide you a direct repository through which you can actually spin off your own account. Let me just zoom this and try to read this together. So it simply says, hey, this is a sandbox account for events, allows you to provide multiple temporary AWS account to a number of authenticated users simultaneously via a browser-based GUI. So what it's saying is simply, hey, it is possible for companies to take an account. And with that account, you can provide temporary accounts to your students or whoever is learning. And these are temporary. These are lease-based. That means it's not a fixed account. Whatever the changes you made will go away. And it creates a temporary access tickets that allows you to uh, define the expiration when there is no activity or after five minutes or after 30 minutes, this will destroy the environment. 
as well as you can plan a maximum budget spent per lead. So let's just say they spend, let's just say, uh, 200 rupees for end user or 100 rupees. No, none of the user actually uh, passes that limit, even 100 rupees, nobody passes that. People just spin off some EC2 machines for a few minutes, some buckets or something like that, very basic. So don't even cross the 100 rupees uh, usually in the case. But it actually protects them to not spend 1000 rupees as well, so <laughs> that's there. Now the common use cases, they also mentioned this, that it's uh, providing playground for hands-on learning like workshops, training, immersive. This is how usually it's being done. And it's not that much difficult to done. It actually behind the scene, it uses uh, Optum's uh, disposable cloud environment, DCE. Uh, this is a project uh, as a backend to register AWS account pools monitor. So this is a really nice project. Maybe someday we'll discuss that. Uh, but this is the whole architecture. There's the front end, AWS Amplify web app, the back end, and this actually uh, talks to the AWS cloud environment, uh, uh, DCE. And uh, then you can simply fork the DC project and spin off the project with the budget, monetization, and all of that. So this is how it actually do is done. If you want to do this, there are prerequisites, there are step-by-step -step guide of how you can do this. Uh, there's everything. There's everything in this repository, a lot of companies. This is actually out of the box. It works out of the box. And that's exactly what a lot of companies actually uh, go ahead and do this. So this actually answers your questions. What is this cloud sandbox? How companies are able to do it? Uh, now taking it or not, it's totally your decision. I won't be taking it. So next question actually comes up is, uh, should we be using the sandbox or the AWS console? Now there is a lot of debate around it. Which one is the best? Uh, I would say that personal, it is my personal belief. Nobody else is contributing in it. I think the best of the learning comes from directly with the console. You might be learning AWS or GCP, just use the direct console. It actually gives you the responsibility and sense of responsibility that, hey, I should be worried about my resources. If I'm spinning something, I should be worried about how I can delete it. And also you'll be doing things responsibly and as close as you will be doing in some corporate environment when you'll be spinning off. Sandbox actually uh, allows you to go all crazy, but that craziness in the cloud and the production is not good. You should always have some sense of responsibility. So that is why I'll be using AWS console. Now this brings us to the next question, which is uh, what if I'm not able to create an AWS account? Now I will be directly jumping into the AWS console home. And uh, yes, this is the console home that I'll be using, but what? What if your question is I'm not able to create an AWS account? Now, if you're not able to create an AWS account, first and foremost, it's super easy. Just like you were able to create an account on YouTube, almost similar to that, write your name, email ID, passwords, and all of that, choose a free tier account. And then it also additionally asks you to verify your account via your card details. It accepts MasterCard, it accepts Visa card, and the problem which used to be there five years ago, not five years, but a few years ago in India about verification of card is no longer there. Cloud providers understand that the India is a big market, so it's not at all even a problem now. You can take your Visa or MasterCard and verify. It actually deducts three rupees, sometimes five rupees, 10 rupees from your account, and these are compulsory deduction. Uh, so you have to pay this much to verify yourself. Although in most cases, they refund you back these, this much small amount, but this is just to pay your bill. And uh, don't worry, it doesn't automatically deduct any bill until unless you are outside of India and having a credit card being enabled in India, you have to manually pay the invoice. It doesn't allow you to automatically detect the money. Uh, that's a good thing for the Indian users who are watching this. Moving on. So uh, the console is overwhelming. If you go to the console for the very first time, you'll see there are services and there are a whole lot of services available up here. Uh, I'll just move on to no background for me. Uh, yep. Uh, so you can see there are a lot of uh, services. Let me move this a little bit to to this side to me, you can see there is a lot of services available here. So yeah, this is definitely a lot overwhelming. And as you can see, this actually sometimes uh, makes the user a little bit panic. Will I have to learn this much, all of this? No, not really. You only selectively learn. And that's what we'll be doing in this series as well. But I do agree, uh, especially I would thank that this is a newer version of the console, which is not as overwhelming as it used to be in the earlier days. It's much, much better. Uh, but you don't have to worry, this series is exactly meant for not to make sure uh, to make sure that you don't get overwhelming uh, there and I'll be helping you in that. So that answers this question. Now biggest of the question, how much build to ex expect uh, for this series? Now I'll try my best 100% that you don't pay even a single rupee for this particular series. This is more of an exploratory series. You don't have to pay anything to it. Almost everything is covered in the free tier account of the cloud, AWS cloud. 
If there is any service which will be incurring any bill, I'll let you know in advance in the videos. But almost, uh, I have taught this class uh, many times in the past as well. Uh, we incurred almost zero to five rupees bill uh, that pays, which is uh, less than half a dollar, less than half a dollar. So this is what I'll be trying, but I'll make sure that to make sure you understand that when to spin off the things, how to shut down the things and all of that. I don't think you should be worried about it at all. Uh, don't get scared. This is the number one advice I can give you. A lot of people don't learn the cloud because they are scared. Don't be scared. It will be totally okay. Totally fine. You are with me and I'll make sure that you feel absolutely comfortable with the cloud. So that's it. It answers all of your burning questions, which you might be having. And now we have set up the stage and uh, by the next video, I expect that at least you will be finding up here. Your recently visited will not look like me, but at least this is what I expect that you'll be on the console home. Go ahead, create an account. If you are uh, facing any trouble or something, do let us know in the comment section of YouTube. There are a lot of other people who will try to help you out or the Discord or wherever you like. So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you have subscribed this. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.